McNair gives it to George, running right up the middle. Touchdown! It's a miracle! You're safety, now you're one on one with it. Shows why he's the man! In trouble. Sacks! Ladies and gentlemen, Titan Nation, how's everyone doing? Today we're going to be doing a breakdown of the Bills versus Tennessee Titans preview. I have all the way from New York. We got a Bills fans, ladies and gentlemen, but he's a good dude. His name's Zachary, uh, or they like to call him Z-Bop. Yes, that is, that is what I'm coined as in the uh, Bills Mafia community. And Bills Mafia, man. Nice, nice to meet you and nice to have you on the show, man. I appreciate you having me. It's always fun to talk to the opposition, especially – a good dude with you, uh, like yourself. And I always appreciate a good setup and you got a killer setup. So love that. And uh, I got to give my credit where credit's due. I have made the trek out to Tennessee. Uh, the last two times the bills were out there and I'm sure you've always heard how the, you know, the mafia takes over or whatever. And it felt like we did last year and I loved it. We had a ball, but you guys left me <laughs> leaving in a pit of misery and a awful gut ache losing the way we did last year so you've had our number the last couple times i'm excited for monday because it feels like we we got some sort of revenge going on right now towards you guys just because you've gotten the best of us the last two trips right the, the that's what everyone's calling and not the titan fans but obviously the bills sure. say it's the yeah. revenge the revenge game and i'm like I, I i can see that why you yeah. guys think that way and again i was at that game last year which was crazy because there was a uh, so much bills fans i was like holy hell like there insane. was so many it was insane how many bills fans were actually present and at first i was like oh man like i never really dealt with bills fans again coming from jersey i kind of know how new yorkers are they're a little bit they're different they're different especially with sports they're a little bit crazier so i'm like i don't know how these like bill, am i gonna get in a fight with these people but there was a, a group you know of, of bill uh, fans right behind me and they were, they were cool. They were cool as hell. We talked, and there was there was no animosity. But he did say that Derrick Henry was going to get stuffed, and that's when he had that 70-yard run. Maybe well, he jinxed the hell out yeah. of that. He had a day. Yeah. He yeah. had a day that we have not forgotten since, <laughs> that's for sure. But, no, that's what we – we like to pride ourselves on that. I mean, at least everybody I roll with, it's always mm -hmm. a good time. I mean, I go to most of the home games, and – the only thing that we like to do with the opposing fans is just kind of bust chops. And usually yeah. people are cool with it. The only time I've ever seen a problem is when the opposing fan kind of wants a problem. You know what I mean? Everybody's usually cool. If everybody's just kind of doing their thing. And yeah, that's the way I like it. I mean, I don't like going the only, the main road games I go to though are out in MetLife kind of near where you, where you okay. originally are from. And I mean, they, what are they going to say to me? You yeah. know what I mean? So that I'm usually good there. I'm usually fine. Yeah, I mean, like, like I said, I know, I know there's a couple of people doing road trips. I mean, they're going to yeah. a couple of friends are going to Philly. I'm like, well, you got to be careful with Philly. Yeah. Philly's, rough. Philly's rough. Philly's there's no joke. I mean, there's a couple other fan bases out there. But again, it, with all with all good and fun, like I said, sure. you guys almost won last year. I mean, Josh Allen slipped supposedly, right? And, <sighs> you know, that's, that slip, man, right? Couldn't keep his feet, man. I just, I, it haunted me because it, it was, to me, it was the right call. I mean, they could have settled, kicked the field goal, took it to overtime. But when you have Allen in a situation like that, I mean, you are in a spot where not many other teams have an asset like Allen to get you almost a guaranteed yard. And the fact that it went the way it did was just so like such a kick to the gut. But um, at the end of the day, it shouldn't, they should not have allowed it to get to the situation it did. They let Derrick Henry go off and it really opened up Ryan Tannehill's ability to get the play action going. And it ultimately came down to the fact that, Hey, the bills put up 31 points that should win you the game. And, and it just, you know, they, they couldn't get it done. Yep. And following the, the the other game, you said there was two games. The other game was the 42 to 16 where oh. Derrick Henry sipped on Josh Norman. I think he's still floating. <laughs> I don't know where he, he He hasn't landed yet. Yeah, he is somewhere one. in the stratosphere, man. Yeah. That was insane. <laughs> oh, my God. That's on every highlight. Every, every NFL promo on television has some iteration <laughs> of that. And for good reason. Even me, you know, as a gigantic Bills fan, I'm like – 
that was amazing. Like, dude, he literally oh. sent him into another planet. It was, it was nuts. But, but you know what? I, I, you know, it, it seems like these two last two seasons, yeah, the Titans have had the Bills numbers, but at the same mm-hmm. time, you look a couple of years back, the Bills have won the. They've been the Titans a couple yeah. times, three times in a row, and they were really ugly, gritty games. Again, both both teams trying to find, you know their their footing and i think with josh allen you guys got your footing then you got Diggs, and now the teams has has finally come together and again it's been talked about you know the season right now is you know super bowl contenders which i mean what it looks like on on the first game of the season it looked like it i mean there's nothing to harp on there's no there's no negative I mean, there's a couple of things that you could have cleaned up, but it's only week one and they beat the brakes off the Rams at home. You got to give them credit with credits too. So respect to you on that one. Well, Hey, speaking of that first game, what's wild about uh, that game? Cause that was my first time ever to Nashville. Um, it was amazing. Just had the best time ever, but I'll always remember that game as it, that was Marcus Mariota's last start as a Titan, if I'm not mistaken, before that they moved, before they moved off of them. And it was weird because there was a string of games that year for the bills where they had won in the following week, the starter from that game had sat. And I was interested in the fact that, you know, I had liked Mariota. In fact, I liked the way he played last week. Yep. But I was was interested to see what the move was going to be there because ever since that game, and it was 14 to 7, both the Bills and the Titans have ascended and gone in a completely different direction than I think anybody probably would have thought. Yeah. That, that, that was rough, man. That was a rough game. It, it was, a, it, it almost put me to sleep at, during it, about halfway it through. Did. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, was a tough terrible. one. <laughs> and then now you look at both teams completely different. Crazy. Um, and and it's, it's crazy to see. And like I said, Josh Allen uh, last week had 297 yards, three touchdowns, two picks. But I mean, it, it's weird. Picks don't really matter unless they lose the game. You don't really talk about it. You're like, ah, he, he kind of, right. yeah. Diggs yeah. had nine targets, eight receptions, 122 yards, touchdown. That's another person you kind of have to keep an eye on. Uh, Gabe Davis, I believe, the giant. I mean, he's, I mean, he's showing up too as well. Mm-hmm. Five targets, four receptions, 88 yards, touchdown. Um, the Bills look impressive defense-wise. Vaughn Miller, it's crazy how such an – I mean, yeah, he's at the tail end of his, his career, but he still has enough juice, and his name, his presence still – you, you got to respect it, right? Well, you want to know what he's brought to the team even more so than what he's done on the field. And I mean, last week, you know, throughout the off season, Von Miller didn't really do all that much on the field because a lot of, you know, veterans days off. And um, it's just, like you said, he's to the point in his career where a lot he- of these guys, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they just kind of don't, take the field all that often at training camp. And of course, during um, the preseason games, most every team benches anybody who's, you know, going to be out there day one. But the one thing that I had looked at with all or not, excuse me, not Oliver. Um, I got him on the mind because I'm thinking about the guys that have really benefited right off the bat from bringing Von Miller in. I had felt that the addition of Von Miller was going to be obviously terrific for our pass rush but I thought even more so it was going to be beneficial for all the young talent that the Bills currently have on the D-line a lot of those guys are within their first two or three years Mm -hmm. and they outside of Jerry Hughes who was a great player for the Bills but never a guy like Von Miller he's bringing in a whole different presence and right out of the gate last week we saw everybody on that D-line have an impact and I think it has a lot to do with Von Miller yeah, definitely. I mean, the pass rush, I think they had seven sacks, 15 yep. pressures with zero blitz. I mean, that right there shows you that, that's that's a defense that, that's that's scary. But you guys are good on the pass rush. Now, exactly. now the defense, defensive run is a different thing. Same thing with the Titans. The, di- the Titans, we had five sacks with AQB hits. We looked good on the pass rush, but our defense, we fell flat let, letting – you know, Barkley get off 32 carries for 238 yards. I mean, you ain't going to win a game like that. So as one point, yeah, pass, pass defense worked. Then we, you know, we, we lose the run defense, which hopefully we'll yeah. pick it up. Um, again, you guys got Singletary. He didn't, he did decent. I mean, eight carries, 48 yards, no, nothing too crazy, but you got to be careful with Josh Allen as well from his arm and his legs as he could be, uh, I mean, he could be a, a threat. So that's the thing I think we have to to kind of keep on our toes, you know, keep Josh Allen in the pocket, make him uncomfortable, hit him as much as possible. 
and hopefully everything else will will tie in together. What do you think, man? What do you think about the Bills? So the way I look at this game, uh, it's similar to the way I looked at the Rams game, but in a totally different way. So going into the Rams game, it was going to be our first opportunity to take a look at this pass rush that we were just talking on. It's pretty much a completely revamped D line for the bills. And the way that the majority of the fan base has felt is that the bills were a legitimate pass rush away from really being the solidified top one to three team in the league. You know, everybody has their debates, but that really felt like the missing piece to be able to ascend to that next level. They lost the AFC championship two years ago to Mahomes because they couldn't touch him. The following, you know, game for the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, the Bucs had one of the best pass rushes all year that year. They completely shut down Mahomes, unlike we've ever seen. So we realized, hey, if the Bills have something similar to that, it's really going to take us to the next level. Now, last week, like you mentioned, seven sacks, zero blitzes and they knocked down Stafford 15 times, but that's a more pass oriented offense. Mm -hmm. So I was interested to see how they handled, you know, a top tier quarterback, which Matt Stafford is this week is going to be their first and probably biggest task as far as stopping the run last year. They got shredded by your Titans and Derrick Henry, three touchdowns, 143 yards. And then Jonathan Taylor absolutely took them to school last last year when the Bills played the Colts. They allowed a ton of big runs and a lot of, you know, major, uh, major yardage plays to where they just got down the field with ease running the ball. This week is the biggest opportunity I think we'll have all season to really get to understand yeah, we know this Bills D is is showing us they're going to be capable of stopping the pass game with a with a really good quarterback. Can they stop one of the premier rushers in the league? If they can do that, you think, you know, the, the Bills mafia right now has been through the roof. If they can shut down Derrick Henry, I mean, I, it's going to go to another level. But, yeah. hey, he's had their way with them. And last year, I mean, he really, really went off. Yeah, definitely. And it seems like he, he's had your number. But like yeah. I said, it does take Derrick Henry a little bit longer to – especially in the, in the beginning of the season, he takes a little bit longer to, 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 to get that fire underneath him. But for our sake, I, I believe, I mean, a lot of people have been talking about it, Titans, you know, fans all around Twitter, everywhere, just the play calling on crit- critical situations. Uh, town, Todd Downing, our offensive corner has been put on a lot of pressure just because of the boneheaded decisions on third and one or third mm-hmm. and two where you're, you know, you're doing a, a swing play to a tight end instead of giving Derrick Henry the ball third and one on a crucial, you know, conversion and stuff like that. So I understand why they're, they're frustrated and that could almost ultimately be the game as well. The, the play calling and the execution on the Tennessee Titans, you can, like I said, we had five sacks, eight QB hits, but I mean, if the offense can't get anything, no points on the board, I mean, defenses can only take you so much. So I think the play calling has to be, um, has to be a hundred percent and they can't be any little hiccups. Either team could, whether they mess up, it's like almost like, Hey, who takes advantage of uh, a missed opportunity or a turnover could really, it could swing either way for either team. I mean, obviously the Bills having that momentum right now coming off being the Super Bowl champions, playing a Monday night at home against yeah. a team that's beaten them twice. They have a lot of leverage. I have a lot of opportunities to shut the Titans out. And again, Titans coming out a little bit flat, losing to a team that they should have won, that kept them in the game. That can't happen with the Bills. If you give that many opportunities to a really, really good team, you're going to get blown out. So hopefully, I mean, we'll see what happens, but... I mean, only time will tell, man. Yeah, so, absolutely. Is it Monday night yet? <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. And I think that that definitely plays in the favor of, I mean, I, I got to, I, I think if I was in your situation, I would be kind of like, man, there's always an advantage that some team seems to have week in and week out, whether it's being at home or, uh, you know, just flat out quarterback differential. There's a million things. But when I look at this game, for the Titans to come off of a, a loss like that and then to carry that into the home opener in the biggest season the bills have had in at least two decades and they come off of a dominant win over the super bowl champs and then you add to the fact 
that Bills fans are they they have it out for Tennessee right now after the last two games. It's a lot of stuff rolling in. However, I always I hate playing good teams that come off of bad losses because they especially this early, you know, you start 0 and 2, especially in the AFC. I mean, you are it's yeah. an uphill battle, you know, yeah. and with Tennessee, they're up 13 nothing the other day, they blow it and they got to be coming into this one more fired up than perhaps they would have been had they had gotten a win that they should have. That's why I hate this type of stuff. You know, they come into this game with a little bit of added juice that I think they might not have had had it have been a victory last week. So I think that that kind of evens the playing field a bit. But I think for you guys, it, it is unfortunate that there's all this stuff rolling into this game for the Bills. Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, I mean, uh, all the the – you know, and, and NFL analysts, you know, pick the, the Bills winning, but that it, it seems to always happen like that. Again, it's like part of the Titans DNA. Again, you wouldn't understand because you're not a Titans fan, but being a Titans fan, man, we it's it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise us, you know, losing to the the bill, I mean to the Giants and then beating the Bills. I mean, yeah. it happened. I mean, last year we lost to the Jets, but beat the Bills. Like it's so it's it's the craziest thing. It's it's the weirdest thing. I wish we could stay a little bit more consistent. I yeah. wish we wouldn't have stuff like that. But I mean, makes the game a little bit more exciting, I guess, right? Dude, it happens. <laughs> the Bills lost to Urban Meyer and the Jaguars last yeah. year. I don't That's understand. That's true. That, that was another stuff. one that's yeah. just like a head scratcher. Like what? sometimes it makes no sense. I, it truly doesn't. That's why I, I I look at this game and you know the reason I feel like it might go one way is more so to do with what I see on the field than it is what happened last week. Cause I don't know, you know, you're up 13, nothing. And maybe they just, they, they got complacent. And also Saquon Barkley had the best game that he maybe has ever had. So a lot went into that and, you know, it, it's tough to judge everything on week one because week one, you really know next to nothing for all us bills fans. know the Rams could come out this whole season and be horrendous. We have no idea. We, we go into that game last all, you know, last thing we see from them is a super bowl victory. So you really don't know how to formulate your opinion based on just one week. True. Yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens. Hey, are you, yeah. are you, are you part of the, the bills mafia? Do you, you jump on tables and stuff? Is, is that, Oh God, do you do that? Yeah. I'm, you do. I'm all in now. Personally, I've never, I'm more of the guy who likes to get my buddy to jump on the table because it's more <laughs> fun to watch. It really is. So I have plenty of buddies who's, who've done actually one of the more iconic ones we've done. So we, when we went to Tennessee the first year, when the bills beat uh, the, the Titans 14 to seven against Mariota there. Was that the one where the guy completely missed and like head dived? Is that, is that what? No, but I did oh, see that one. Thank that God was that bad. wasn't my buddy. I probably would have had to miss the game and go to the ER. So that would, that's good. That didn't happen. But our one buddy. So what we did is when we went to Tennessee, we took four coach buses from Buffalo and drove to Tennessee. It was like 11 hours. And there must've been, there was hundreds of us that went and we all tailgated in the same spot in this massive, like abandoned like construction lot near the stadium uh -huh. and it happened to have a bunch of construction equipment and our buddy got on top of a caterpillar and he did the uh he did the the table dive off of a uh whatever you call it a, a, a what, what, what are they called the uh i'm blanking right now you know what i'm talking about the um bulldozer <laughs> bulldozer off of a bulldozer wow. probably 15 feet in the air gravel on the ground and i'm like dude i'd much rather watch you do that than me get up there and do that all day it's way more fun to watch all right well i, I was i was gonna i was gonna make this a little bit interesting i think as one fellow youtuber to another fellow yeah. youtuber i think we place a bet right Let's oh i'm all out. in let's hear it we place a bet now if say the bills win mm -hmm. i get a random table I say go Bills, and I jump from wherever the hell I'm at Love and it. land on it. And okay. same vice versa. If you if the Titans beat uh, the Bills, same thing. You you film it, and then we'll post it. There you go. Let's do a virtual shake on that because there I'm all in. I love a friendly bet. It's funny you bring this up because we had um, over at the Buffalo Fanatics, we had some uh, some Dolphins fans throwing some heavy shots at us yeah. <laughs> before the season and i'm contemplating putting up a very very risky bet well not risky because i'm confident the bills are taking the dolphins down in two weeks but a very heavy bet i'm, I'm thinking about offering shaving my entire beard off that i've been growing oh, for wow. two years 
Yeah, but they're going to have to – the thing is, though, if I'm putting something up like that, their stakes are going to have to match. Yeah, it has to definitely, 100%. Yeah. Especially but nothing better than that, man, having a little on the line, you know, especially when it's kind of like a little bit of a public humiliation type thing. It, yeah. it, it, it makes it that much more fun. Exactly. So yeah. that that that's uh, that's a bet we'll do, man. <laughs> Love it. I'm all in on that. That's perfect. And you want to know what? I think I, – I swear to God – now, granted, the last time I fit in this, I was probably nine, but I'm almost positive I have a youth Vince Young jersey that I can uh, that I can equip myself with in there the very go. unlikely scenario. That yeah, I was about to say, I'm like, wow, I'm like you're, you're sounding right now. You're like, I don't know what's happening. I'm like, that's awesome. Right? Trust me, I'd much rather not put on the uh, the Vince Young jersey that wouldn't make it past my uh, my chest right now. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, man. That sounds good. Uh, let's let's get your predictions before we yeah. end this thing. I mean, obviously we know where you're going to go with, but let's hear. Yeah. This and listen, and, and this is no disrespect to anything to do with you or the Titans, because I got to tell you, every time I've been out to Nashville, um, I've absolutely loved it. And it's been an incredible time spending time with Titans fans when we go out there because they're usually very welcoming. I feel like when you're in a tourist town like that, you really don't have any other choice. I mean, there's so many people who pile <laughs> in. I will say though, they let us have it after they won because all week we're dominating the bars, talking a ton yeah. of shit, you know? And then with that said, however, I just look at the Bills game last year versus the Titans and I look at it this year and I can't for the life of me anticipate that Derrick Henry has the type of game that he does last year with this revamped D line mm -hmm. with that. I think that that also takes away Ryan Tannehill's ability to get down the field. Like he was able to last year. And on top of that, this bill's offense almost religiously at this point is guaranteed to put up a 30 plus game. Now last year they did that against the Titans, but the defense just wasn't there. Yeah. So this year, I just think that the revamped D-line ultimately winds up making the difference here. And I just don't quite know if the Titans defense, who, you know, they just got, like you had mentioned, just not, not too far away from 300 rush yards allowed to the Giants. And Daniel Jones had an efficient day. It wasn't great by any means, but it was efficient. So I look at that, and I know I said that earlier, I don't put too much stake in the week one games. But if the Giants are capable of doing that, it makes you wonder what the Bills are going to be able to pull off. So the way I see it, I got 31-17 bills. But I got to say, a spread like this one sitting at right now, 10 points, it always concerns me. That's a big number. And like I mentioned earlier, the bills coming off a heavy win like that, riding the momentum, and the Titans want to come out not going 0-2. There's a lot there. And I like Brian, I, I mean, excuse me, I like Mike Vrabel a ton. I feel like he's going to be prepped up for this game. He sure as hell has been the last two times. So that's how I'm feeling. But at the same time, man, I also just came off that win against the Rams. I got the, I got <laughs> this fuel up. in me. Yeah. So, but that's where I stand right now. But at the same time, it would not shock me if, like you said, we, we see the Titans pull a Titans where they go out and lay an egg against the Giants. And this week we see a completely different team. Uh, all right. I, I see, I see 27, 24 Titans. And I just feel like if we game plan correctly, if we drag, if we keep Josh Allen and the offense without the ball, we drag it like how the, the Titans do run the ball, kill the clock, milk it, milk it. I think there's a chance that we could see that score. We could see that win again, who knows what can happen. I mean, they could go out there and just lay a goose egg like they did before, or they come in like last year, like a team that, you know, we're like, what kind of team is this? So yeah. I just feel like with clock management, uh, keep Josh Allen on the sideline watching and have the defense show up when it needs to show up. We'll see what happens, but. Uh, yeah, that, like, it's a good point you make. And I look at it like if I'm the Titans in this game and I win the coin toss, I, I want the ball first. Yeah, want the ball. I would think that if you yeah. you you have got to get out, if, if the Bills go up like 10 nothing early. No, that's it. That could it's be. It's over. Exactly. Yeah. The Titans have got to find a way to get an early lead or keep it close because and they have to drag, be able to run it. Exactly. And drag the ball. Totally that's, agree. That's it. So, yeah. we'll see what happens. And um, like I said, man, hey, it was uh, – it was good having you on. Maybe we'll do a we'll, we'll do a post game. A I would love game. to do a post game, especially. Hey, you want to know what we could do during the post game? We could uh, we could film whoever loses the bet here there on the go. post game, and we could we could make a whole thing out of it because I'm Let's loving this. This is my first YouTuber to YouTuber bet, 
and it's got me even more jazzed up than I already am. So I'm I'm ready to rock. Like I said, it, it was kind of last. Like just they just came over. I'm like, no, I, I'm so glad you did, man. I love that. I mean, and especially come from a you know from Bills fans. I mean, I'm surprised you haven't gotten so many bets where it's like, hey, you know, you jump off and and that and that's another I thing I have to ask you. Um, yeah about the tables because i have no idea what type of tables you guys use like like the plastic ones from walmart because those look kind of they look kind of those look rock solid i don't, I don't know what kind of ones you they. Know what, you know what's kind of crazy about it is you see it very often and that's what we become known for and and it looks like oh it's just a crappy you know cheap table whatever dude those tables are like 60 bucks <laughs> You know what I mean? It's not like we're going and running through like $10 tables here. So the second you mentioned the bet, I'm like, we better win because I do not want to spend 60 bucks on a table just to shatter this thing. I was just like, I was like, oh man, I'm like, yeah. I have this one. This is the only table I got, but we'll see what happens. I- it's just a standard card table. So, hey, when the bills run it up on Monday night, do yourself a favor and find the cheapest one that you can possibly I'm find. Sorry, so, I'm going to start sawing this thing in the middle so it's yeah. easy to jump on. Hit up Facebook Marketplace. Someone's got to have one on the, on the side of the curb somewhere. Definitely. <laughs> Just let me know how how the, the 60 bucks taste after you, you jump on through the table. Look at, if, if, any, if that happens, you will hear me complaining far more about the money spent than me having to jump to that table. With that big <laughs> team, that's for sure. Sounds good, man. Hey, I man. Love it. Uh, Zach, it's been, a, it's been a blast to have you on, bro. Hey, pleasure's mine. Can't wait for Monday night. It's a, it's unfortunate that we uh, we missed out on that Vikings Eagles game. I don't know why we didn't get the top spot. We're getting the we're getting the B crew from ESPN. Yeah. What's up with that? Have no idea. It's because you know what? It's because it's Titans related. And you, you guys, you think that's what me, it is. Yeah, it's it's it's. Trust me, as a Titans fan, we ready. We get the shit end of the stick all the time. So unfortunately, you got it with us because you're with. Us. Sorry, man. <laughs> hey, whatever. I'm going to the game, so I don't have to sit through it. But okay, um, cool, cool. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. I uh, I had decent luck last year, but like I said, last two times I made that trek all the way to Tennessee, they lost. So I better not be. I better not be going over three here. I'm gonna lose it if that happens. <laughs> all right, man. Well, have a good one, and we'll talk to you later. All right, bro. Mister Titan, appreciate it, and we'll cash that bet one way or the other next week. Sounds good, man. Tighten up. All right, go Bills. <laughs>